Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to take a look at setting up missions in INAV. Now this is a video that people have been asking me to make for ages and before I hadn't really flown a lot of missions. To be honest I still haven't flown a lot of missions but I've got a lot more used to the process and so I thought I'd share a video of showing you how to set up the basics for missions. Before we get started I'm just going to show you on my transmitter I've not got anything special set up, all I've got is a button to activate the waypoint missions. So let's jump into configurator. Alright, so I'm not going to use the mission control here because the flight controller is connected and I've got a GPS lock. Now just as another caveat, in this video I will be using the hardware in the loop system to show you this. Just easier, I don't have to go outside. It looks and sounds right at the moment but it is supposed to be very heavy rain today. <laughs> but it will work the same way. Right, so the first thing I'll do is show you the modes page. There's nothing special going on in here, but you will need a mode set up on your switches for nav WP mission. So if I click that button, then we're in the mission mode. Uh, so again, I'll just switch to acro for the minute, but just make sure you have a mode for mission set up. Next, what we're going to do is take a quick look in advanced tuning because there are a couple of parameters in here that can have an effect on missions. OK, so the first one is actually the loiter radius. There's a new smoothing option in missions and that will take your loiter radius into consideration when making turns around waypoints. So if we want to smooth our waypoints out, it will actually use the loiter radius to uh, define how much that turn is. So um, the main bits we want to see are in this waypoint navigation settings. Right, so let's just have a quick look. All of these have little question marks where you can hover over to get a full appreciation of what these things do. And there's also, if you click on them, it should take you to the GitHub to give you an explanation of that um, actual setting. But just as a basic overview, let's take a quick look. So we have waypoint radius. This is the size of the waypoint on the ground. So in a sec, we'll be creating points on our map. And this just defines how big the radius is from that the center of that point outwards before it determines that the waypoint has been reached. So 50 meters in this case is a 100 meter circle with our waypoint in the center of it. Um, just so you guys know, I'm minus set to meters. That is because I'm using metric in here. If you're on none, it will be in centimeters or imperial, obviously be feet or something like that. The next one is waypoint safe distance. Now this is how far away the first waypoint can be from your arming location to actually be valid. If it's too far away, it will say, no, it's too much. We're not gonna fly there. This It's a safety thing basically, just in case you have a waypoint from another site somewhere, it's still on your aircraft, especially if you have automatic loading uh, enabled um, you don't want it to go flying off somewhere you don't want it to go so this is just a safety feature to make sure that the first waypoint is local to where you're flying here is the load waypoints on boot option so we could enable that so that the waypoint mission will automatically load the only issue with this is if you're not flying waypoints all the time it can be a bit of a pain especially if the first waypoint is too far away you'll you'll find that you'll have to unload the mission before you can actually arm or do any flying enforce altitude at waypoint is a setting to make sure that your aircraft is at the altitude that you set for that particular waypoint before progressing to the next one now if that's set to zero it's disabled and if you set it to a value it's the minimum offset that it can be. It has a range of one to 2,000, which is in centimeters. So for example, if we set it to 100, that's one meter. It will need to be within one meter of the set altitude before it continues. There is a little caveat with fixed wings, you should not be set below 500 centimeters because a quad can just basically hover at an altitude. It's better for a fixed wing to have a tolerance and the recommended setting here is five meters. So on our fixed wing, we either want it at zero, which is off or 500 or greater, which is five meters to 20 meters. And once we get within that altitude differential range, it will continue to the next waypoint. Right, next up we have waypoint tracking accuracy. And this is how accurate it will try to track the waypoints. If it's zero, again, it's disabled. And it, this has a setting of one to 10. So the lower the value means a higher precision. And it's recommending six as a good starting value. 
If it's 10, it'll be a lot more slack as it follows the waypoint. One will be trying to stay dead on that path. All right, next we have waypoint tracking angle, and this is the angle that the aircraft can sort of attach to the new track. So a recommended starting point is 60 degrees, so it can come in at 60 degrees on that line and then sort of get straight on target. If you have too low an angle, it can take longer to get on track. And if you have too high an angle, it can cause overshoot. So it's basically tuning this for your aircraft just to make sure it gets as smoothly onto that waypoint track as possible. Of course, depending on the angle of the last waypoint and the next one, it can take longer to get on track. We're just looking for a best fit, really. The next one is waypoint smoothness. Now, by default, this is turned off which basically behaves as the old system did. But with smoothness turned on, there are two options. There's on and there's cut. Now on will, before it reaches the waypoint, go around the outside and then come back in. The idea being that it's on a straight line as it enters the next waypoint. And with cut, what it will actually do is detect when it's getting close to the uh, waypoint. It uses the loiter radius for this one. And what it will actually do is cut the corner so it at just makes a nice smooth curve onto the next waypoint leg. So it doesn't actually reach that specific point, but it cuts the inside and just smooths the corner out. And the final option is restart waypoint mission. And there's three options here. There's start, resume and switch. If it's set to start, it will actually start the entire waypoint mission again. If it's set to resume, it carries on from where it left off. And if it's set to switch, it changes each time you toggle waypoint on and off, which to me, it seems a bit confusing. So I just usually leave this on resume. So if there's any issues, it will just carry on with the current waypoint mission. But that's basically all the settings in the advanced tuning you need to worry about. So what we're gonna do now is head into mission control and have a look at planning. Right, so in mission control, if you've got a GPS fix, you'll have a little picture of your aircraft where it is. If not, don't worry about it. And also, if you're planning to fly somewhere else, again, don't worry about it. All you need to do is find the location that you want to fly. Now, I figured it's Goodwood Festival of Speed this weekend, so I'm going to choose the Goodwood circuit. It's also a nice grass track. Um, because I'm using the hardware in the loop, I need to use an official runway. So again, that's why I'm using Goodwood. One thing to bear in mind when setting this up, if you're flying from somewhere like a field and you're planning in advance, make sure you set that first waypoint within that distance, otherwise it won't be able to load. So what I'm going to do is this is where we're going to arm. So I'm just going to set a first waypoint, maybe right over the cross, and that should be well within that uh, one and a half kilometers that I've got set on mine. Right, moving around the map is as you'd expect. You can just middle click to drag. You can left click to drag. And if you just click, it's how it uh, lays the waypoints. You can actually click, hold and drag them about to new points as well. So let's have a look where we're going to fly. Now, let me see if I can find Goodwood House and let's see if we can actually fly the course. Right. So there's Goodwood House. So this is going to be our start. So let's go here. We'll go here go here basically i'm just going to try and do the hill climb course if i can work out where it goes yeah because i think that's up to the rally stage there um yeah that will do so we've just done a brief uh mission and as you can see it's it's going to be a fair flight, but um, we're going to take off from this location. When we enable waypoint, we'll fly to here and then we will proceed to do the, the hill climb course at uh, the Festival of Speed. What we're going to do is set a couple of options. So this is our first waypoint. We can see here there's a few different things we can do. So we can change the waypoint type to a uh, position hold. We can use it as a point of interest or we can set it to land. I'm just gonna leave it on waypoint. It has the longitude and latitude for the coordinates of the waypoint. It also has the altitude and we can use a uh, sea level reference as well. If I click on this button here, we'll actually get um, an elevation chart below. And this is showing 
uh, the ground elevation along our mission. So we can make sure that we're not actually going to impact the ground. And if I turn use sea level earth DEM model on, we'll actually get an overlay. So you'll see at these points, we're actually going to smash into the ground, which is not good. So we will need to change these in the mission. So our takeoff point, we've got to 109 meters. We can set that to whatever. So if we set this to 50 meters, we'll see our altitude here has changed and we're still above the ground, which is all good. Uh, it's got a red here for ground distance 20 meters. That is because the ground elevation is 30 meters. So the difference between us and the ground is only 20 meters. But what we can do is choose reference sea level and then that will change it to a 50 meter gap between us. We have our elevation, which is the ground level and we have our distance from the ground there. The next one is the speed. Now, don't worry about this if you're flying fixed wing. This is only for multi-rotors. With fixed wing, we use our cruise speed. So there's nothing really to change here. All right, so let's go and take a look at some of these other waypoints. All right, so you can see at the end of the mission, I'm actually raising up a little bit, but you can see we can actually follow the ground by a certain distance. All right, so while we're on the last one, what I'm actually going to do is add a, um, a type to this. So we can have a jump, which we can jump to a older waypoint. So we could put in like waypoint 10. We can do set head, which I think points the quad at a certain direction. But again, that's only for quad. So you could have it pointing at 90 degrees, but still be flying along the waypoint. But I'm going to set this to return to home because it is the last point on there. So once we hit hit this waypoint here, we should then fly back to our arming point. So this is a very, very basic mission. And what we're going to do now is save this to the EEPROM. Now we need to do this to actually use the mission. So once it's saved, we should have a valid mission. For some reason, this is not... Oh yeah, there we go. Just took its time. We have a green tick. We know that the mission is valid. It's all going to work. As long as we're within that one and a half kilometers of the first waypoint. So we can actually make sure that it's on the flight controller. We can load the mission from the EEPROM. It will delete this mission and then load back in what we have set on our flight controller. Hopefully. There we go. So yeah, our mission is stored on the flight controller. Everything is valid. So this is a basic setup. So let's go fly it and see what happens. Okay, so here we are in our aircraft. I'm just going to connect to the flight controller. Uh, lower the throttle. So as you can see, the mission is loaded. I did turn on the auto load. If you don't want to do that, you can load the missions using stick commands. Rather than show what they are, I will put a link in the video description to a document that I have where you can actually choose what mode your radio is in. So a lot of stuff just shows mode two, but my page is set up so you can choose what mode your radio is in and it will show the correct stick commands for that mode. But um, you can see the mission is loaded. So let's just go flying. All right, flights, set engines to running, arm, let's go. Right, so let's take off and then go to mission. Okay, that's working fine. We're now in the waypoint mission mode. You can see it's got WP in the top corner and we've already got to our first waypoint. So now we're heading on to the second waypoint. You can see on screen there are some little markers in the middle with a two. So let's see if I can get it a bit clearer. So there we go. You can see the little sort of uh, looks like a guitar pick with a two on it. That is where the second waypoint is. And underneath is the distance and altitude it's switching between. So we're uh, 0.86 miles away. My OSD is in UK measurements. Um, you can see the altitude is shifting quite a bit, but I would take that as a hardware in the loop issue. You don't really see this in flight is pretty smooth. 
So we're approaching the first waypoint and then we'll head back along the star track. You can't, can't you can actually see the three in the left, sort of upper left side of the screen. That's where the next waypoint is, but we'll get to in a sec. So we're almost at the waypoint. We're going to start turning in a sec just to cut that corner. And you'll then see the three come along. So that's Goodwood House. So we're following this road that you can see just in the bottom of the picture that was quite a big turn so now we're going to turn around to hopefully fly in front of Goodwood House along the main drive I mean this is going to be quite tight but it will give an idea so yeah we're not doing too badly and now we're heading our way up the hill so you can see a few waypoints in advance there's three on screen at the moment I believe you can actually change this to more or less depending on the settings. There's something in the CLI you can change to show more or less waypoints. But to be honest, I don't think you really want more than three. So yet yeah, we're following, that's definitely the hill climb course. But yeah, we're following the, the, uh, the track that we want. We're staying 30 meters above the ground, luckily. This, as I say, this altitude difference problem here is actually the hardware in a loop it has problems keeping up because it's processing quite a bit even though the coordinates and all everything is on the flight controller it's still doing a fair bit of processing but you can still see we're following the road we're almost at the top of the hill now so yeah you can see the road between the trees um, that's going to be where the rally stage usually is on the right hand side and now we're coming up to the race course so the next waypoint will be uh, the final turn and the next waypoint will then send us on an RTH. So once we reach there, we're in RTH, which will take us all the way back to the aerodrome at the start and that will complete our mission. Well, technically our mission is completed now. We're just doing RTH, but there we go. Our mission is successful. Everything has worked as expected. So. I hope this has helped you guys out. This has just been a basic understanding of waypoints. There are a few extra advanced things we can do. For example, we can use waypoints to trigger events in programming. So if there's anyone who's interested in that sort of stuff, I've sort of briefly covered it in older videos. I believe I covered it in the INAV 6.0 new features video. But if you would like another video maybe looking at some of these advanced features then drop a comment below the video and i'll look into adding one of these but i hope you guys found this video useful if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up click the subscribe and the bell icon that can help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too thank you very much for watching guys fly models like you stole them and i'll see you on the next one